All right, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Sharice Johnson Moore here, your hope builder, lifting you up out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. And it is time, it is time, it is time. It is time for our daily devotional for today. Today, we will be talking about 1 Kings chapter 4, 1 through 34. 1 Kings Chapter 4, 1 through 34, and it speaks about prosperity of Solomon. Prosperity of Solomon. So get your Bibles, tablets, iPhones, tablets, uh, however your iPads, however you may be reading the word. And come on and let's learn about the prosperity of Solomon. All right now, come on, let's get busy with our daily devotion. Authors, 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 have you written a book? Are you an experienced author or a new author? Well, I've got news for you. Authors Excerpt Sunday is the perfect start to growing your audience awareness with the public. Authors Excerpt Sunday has interview spots available in many forms. Live broadcasting done on all social media outlets, television, and podcasting. We would love to help you tell the world about your book. You can reach us at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com or 724-570-1153 for further details. And let's tell the world about your book. All right, everyone, it is time for us to get into this word. We are reading 1 Kings chapter 4, 1 through 34, and it reads, So King Solomon was king over all Israel, and these were the princes which he had, Azariah the son of Zadok, Zadok the priest, El e- Elihoratham, Elihoratham and Ahiah, the sons of Shishai, scribes. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilu, the recorder. And Benani, the son of Jehoiada, was over the host. And Zadok and Abithia were the priests. And Azariah, the son of Nathan, was over the officers. And Zabud, the son of Nathan, was principal officer and the king's friend. And Ahishar was over the household. And Adonaram, the son of Abda was over the tribute. And Solomon had 12 officers over all Israel, which provided visuals for the king and his household. Each man his month in a year made provision. And these are their names. The son of Hur in Mount Ephraim, the son of Dakar in Makaza and in Sh- Shalabim and Besh- Beshemesh and Elon Beth Hanan, Elon, ha- Elon Beth Hanan, the son of Heshed he in Ar- Arabuth. To him pertaineth so, so, Socha and all the land of Hephro, the son of Abinadad, and all the reign of Dor, which had Topheth, the daughter of Solomon, to wife. 
Benio, Benny, Ben, Ben, Benny, Ben, Beano, the son of Ahalu, to him pertaineth Teanach, and Megadu, and all Beshe, Beshe, Beshean, which is by Zartana, beneath Jezreel, from Beth Shean to Abel Mihola, Abel Abel Mihola, even unto the place that is beyond Jochan Jochanim. The son of Geber, in Ramoth the Gilead, to him pertaineth the towns of Jair, the son of Manasseh, which are in Gilead. To him also pertaineth the region of Argob, Argob, which is in Bashan. Three score great cities with walls and brazen bars. Ahinadab, the son of Idu, had Mahanium, Mahanium. Ah. Him Aziz, Ahim Aziz was in Nephtali, Nephtali. He also took Bashmith, the daughter of Solomon, to wife. Benani, the son of Hushai, was in Asher and Aloth. Jehoshaphat, the son of Pa Parua in Issachar. Shimei, Shimei, the son of Elu, e, e, Elah in Benjamin. Gerba, the son of Ur, was in the country of Gilead, in the country of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and of Ah, king of Bashan. And he was the only officer which was in the land. Judah and Israel were many, as the sand which is by the sea in multitude, eating and drinking and making merry. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines and unto the border of Egypt. They brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. And Solomon's provision for one day was thirty measures of fine flour and threescore measures of meal, ten fat oxen and twenty oxen out of the pastures, and hundred sheep beside hearts, hearts, and roebuck, and follow deer, and fatted fowl, for he had dominion over all the region on this side the river, from Tifashe, Tifasai, even to Azar, uh, Azar, over all the kings on this side the river, and he had peace on all sides round about him. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and under his fig tree, from Dan even to Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. And Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. And those officers provided visuals for King Solomon. And for all that came unto King Solomon's table, every man in his month, they lacked nothing. Barley also and straw for the horses and dromedars brought they unto the place where the officers were, every man according to his charge. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the same. Okay, um, so we were at 
24 and 28. Barley also and strong for the horses and dromedaries brought they unto the place where the officers were, every man according to his charge. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much, and largeness of heart even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country, and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, Ethan the Ezrahite, Ezrahite and Heman, the Charcoal, and Darda, Darda the son of Mohal, Mahal, and his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spake also of beasts, and of fowl, and of creepy things, and of fishes. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. I have just read 1 Kings chapter 4, 1 through 34, the prosperity of Solomon. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to breath in our bodies and activity of our limbs, and we are in our right minds just for today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing right now, Lord, that you give us clarity in our decisions of discernment, Lord. We ask you that you give us clarity in all walks of life, in all situations, in all trials and tribulations and in peace and in joy and in happiness that we have in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this word. Lord, we thank you. And may you add a blessing to the reading of your word. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hello to all my entrepreneurs. My name is Sharice Johnson Moore and welcome to Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. Do you have products and services that you want to tell the world about? Well, I have an offer for you. Did you know that when you make a 60 minute voiceover ad and place it in podcasts, that it increases your business awareness by 50% in the marketplace? Voice over ads aren't that expensive. They range from $15 to $25. It all depends on where you place your ad in the podcast. So come on in and place your ad on Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast and tell the world what you have to offer. You can reach me at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com or 724-570-1153 for further details. Come on, let's tell the world what you are made of. All right, all right, all right, everyone. Let's deep dive into chapter four. First Kings chapter four. Now, we see that King Solomon is a ruler over Israel, all of Israel. And because of his decision, because of his decision to turn around and be obedient to God and follow the instructions his father gave him and him asking for wisdom, the way what he asked for was wisdom to pass judgment. To, to give up, uh, to have a clear mind when it comes concerning um, ruling over the people. He asked for wisdom. He didn't ask for jewels. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for all this. He didn't ask for materialistic stuff. He asked for wisdom.
And sometimes, you, you know, when you when you when you are in constant prayer and conversation with God, you're really seeking His wisdom on all matters, no matter what they are. And when you're always seeking God, and you're always uh, asking God His opinion, or you're asking God for permission, or you're asking God, you know, just just having a a, a relationship with Him sets you up for a blessing. Being devoted, being constantly, um, constantly, um. Uh, how can I say it? Constantly, always seeking God first. Your blessings will come. And they may not come when you want them, as they say, but they would, you, you'll you get them. You know, your desires. Want, you're serving God. You're serving Him with your whole heart. You're serving Him with um, what, he, you know, you... You're serving him with your whole being. And when you serve God with your whole being, there is nothing, nothing you cannot accomplish. There's nothing you can't accomplish. And when you always seek God, always have a desire to talk with him, and Don't let nobody tell you that seeking God is something you should you should not do. You know, seeking God is a must now these days. Because there's so much stuff going on out here in the world. So much stuff going on here in the world. And it's and it's and it is a thing of you have to have yet learn discernment, discernment of knowing right from wrong, having the right judgment when it comes to things, and you know, I I try not to put myself in so much of these conversations that we have, you know, because someone told me, no, don't talk about you all the time, okay? I try not to do that, but. Some of the things I talk about, I've experienced. And I know when I had those three deaths in my family, those three deaths right behind each other, I started building a relationship with God out of out of fear. Because I did not have three those three people to turn to anymore. I didn't have the security of them. I didn't have... Uh, the right mind, I didn't know how to have the right mindset and, and things like that. And when you're feeling lost, when you're feeling lost, that kind of grief, that kind of loss, you do not know how who to turn to when you are feeling that kind of grief and loss and pain. So I turned to God because that was who I knew I could rely on, and I started building a rapport with him and me, and reestablishing a relationship with God because I didn't, I didn't know nobody else to turn to because mortal man had failed me. Mortal man had failed me to the, uh, the, to the point where I didn't believe nothing anybody would tell me. You know, I didn't believe, you know, I, I didn't seek the counsel of others because I had been led astray like that. And sometimes it would lead to it benefiting somebody else. And, and it was like, no, I want to have a relationship with God because I knew of God, but I didn't know, I didn't know, know God. I knew them, you know, you go to church, they tell you about God and things of this nature, and they give you the little children's stories and stuff. But when you start developing a, a close relationship with God, things change in your life, and your perspective change, your mindset change, everything changes. 
you know, and Solomon has 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 developed this strong relationship like his father has, uh, developed where he's always in prayer, praise, and worship with God. And that is how my relationship came to be, where I started trusting God more because I didn't believe in man. I didn't believe in mortal man. I didn't believe, you know, I I just had lost all faith in humanity. And, you know, and diving into the Word, diving into my Bible every day, diving into, you know, things that God was leading me to do. Instead of listening to the outside world where I would, I, I listened to somebody, I did start doing drugs. I listened to somebody and I started doing, I started being a stripper. I started, I, 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 I had to, I had to block out all the worldly stuff that I was doing when I reconnected with God. And that's the best decision I made in my life of reconnecting with God, having a relationship with Him. Because when I started having a relationship with Him, my mindset changed. You know, well, you ask for, you know, you've done your sins, you committed your sins and things like that, and you ask God for forgiveness. You ask God for this forgiveness, for forgiveness of something you have done. And God knows the sincerity of your heart. And I started doing, like I said, I started doing things different in my life. That's how I knew God was working in me. Because I didn't have those desires for those things no more. I didn't have the desire to go smoke crack. I didn't have the desire to go do drugs or hang out or sleep with any and everybody. I didn't have that desire no more. Because I'm, I, ask, I ask God to change me. And... When you come into that newness of having a relationship with God, He changes your whole perspective about how you see people, how how you are accept, how you are treated by people, and how you treat others, and how you love. You know, it's love thy neighbor and things of that na- and things of that nature. Where some like things in the past used to bother you, they don't bother you no more. It's like okay, well, maybe you're speaking out of pain, a way of. You're speaking out of your pain. You're not speaking from your deliverance. You're speaking out of your pain. And sometimes, if you if you let God just work in your life, work, I mean completely work, like totally work, if you just let God work in your life, you don't have no problems. You you have them, but you'll know how to handle them better. Okay, so and you know that's that's the thing. You gotta learn how to be at peace. Solomon is doing very well in his leadership role of being peaceful. Being peaceful, being uh, the person he is, being you know diligent and and seeking seeking things that you know he is seeking he is seeking a peaceful existence in his life, and he's not doing bad at all. So. What things are you correcting in your life to get right with God, to live a peaceful a peaceful life, a more peaceful life, a more peaceful existence? You know, what are you doing to, to, to do that, to, to really get that going? Okay, so I want to thank y'all for listening for today's podcast episode. And... You know, in the end of the chapter, it speaks about how everybody 
all the people heard, all the people came to hear, came to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. You know, to seek wisdom is is the ultimate goal. You know, not riches or goals or property or things like that. And, not, and not, I'm not saying, and not, I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with having those things. But to have wisdom is the ultimate, ultimate goal. You know, have wise judgment. Okay, I want to thank y'all again for coming and listening to. Um, daily devotional and I'll talk to you next time babies okay all right y'all have a blessed day hello to all my entrepreneurs my name is Sharice Johnson Moore I am the owner, CEO of LBM TV. It is a streaming channel that can be located on the C1 Media Network Smart TV app. This app can be located on Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire Stick, Android TV, and Google TV. We have advertising spots available for businesses that want to advertise their products or services on our channel. We have an audience of 4.25 million viewers daily, reaching 70-plus countries. We have advertising packages to fit your company's needs. We would love for you to join the LBM family. You can reach us through our email address, lbmtvmedia at gmail.com, or call us at 724-570-1153 for further details. Talk to you soon, and let's advertise, advertise, and tell the world what you are made of. I know, I know, I know, I know. Our time is up for daily devotional for today, but... Me, being your host, Sharice Johnson-Moore, had a marvelous time bringing you the word for the day, you know, sharing thoughts, and, and, you know, I want you to share your thoughts with me. Reach out to me in the comment section or through my email, I am Sharice at Uh, SharicenJohnsonMoore.com, and I wanted to say it has been an honor and a privilege to honor and a privilege to uh, bring you this word every day. Bring you the word every day. Yeah, I know I have been missing some days, but um, you know, sometimes I realize this in life. Sometimes you need to take a break from doing a lot of things. You try to, you try to do everything, 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 everything. And sometimes you can burn yourself out like that. So when I realize I'm about to burn myself out, I take breaks on purpose. Because I do not want to destroy my mental health, right? So, so, in order for me to maintain my mental health, I take breaks from doing, just doing nothing, okay? So, and I apologize uh, I apologize for that, you know, for me taking a break and not telling y'all. So, I'll let y'all know when I take my breaks from now on, okay? Um, I wanted to say thank you, and I wanted to say it's been my honor and a privilege to bring you the devotional each and every day. I wanted to say if you would like to donate to this podcast... You can go to anchor.fm.com backslash Sharice Johnson Moore backslash support. Go to anchor.fm.com backslash Sharice Johnson Moore backslash support. Okay, to help this podcast elevate to another level. And you will be helping me help somebody else in the process. Our local batter homeless women's shelter here in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. So, 
Um, I believe in helping others. I believe in doing my part, you know, because I used to work in a shelter and I used to live in one. So I know how, I know what both spectrums look like. Um, I greatly appreciate everyone's help and it has been my honor and a privilege to bring you our daily devotional for today. I want y'all to have a blessed day, all right? And I'll talk to you again on daily devotional. Um, we will be in 1 Kings chapter 5, 1 through 18 in our next uh our next session. Okay. 1 King chapter 5, 1 through 18 in our next session. Okay, and I'll talk to y'all later. I love you and y'all have a blessed day. Bye, babies.